Welcome back. Another week, and we're here again. Ah, oh, God. Where do we start? Uh, the Iowa caucuses went off last week, or, and uh, Ted Cruz won Republican, followed by Donald Trump, uh, and on the Democratic side, we heard two, uh, you know, I won speeches. Uh, and it was close. Uh, and how they can still say, you know, it's close, it's close. Uh, anyway, uh, today with any luck, you went out and you voted uh, here in the New Hampshire primary, which was today. Uh, and, you know, I'd like to be able to tell you how everything worked out, but see, it's how I filmed this last Thursday. Bah, wait till next week's show and I'll, I'll let you know what, what went down in the, in the New Hampshire rumble for the president. Um, God, uh, I do have to make a correction though. Last week I did a, uh, I was talking about the music stuff and I misquoted the name of a, a Jackson Brown song and the song is not called Blood on the Wire, it's called Lives in the Balance. And uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm gonna start there because one of the lines in that song says, uh, I wanna know who the men in the shadows are. I wanna hear somebody asking them why. They can be counted on to tell us who our enemies are, but they're never the ones to fight or to die. And you know, it brings up a, a, a great thought, you know, that it's, it's our US government picks our enemies. We as a people don't pick our enemies, our government picks our enemies. How you ask, does our government pick our, our enemies? Um, it's whatever financially benefits the corporations that own the government are. For instance, Iraq, the Middle East, um, Halliburton, a company that's owned by uh, Cheney or Rumsfeld or, or one of them, uh, one of them guys owns this huge company that makes billions off of the profits of war. And anyway, that's why the government picks our enemies. We don't, uh, you know, why doesn't the government concentrate on what they're supposed to be doing, like taking care of us and building roads and making sure that, you know, our country is safe. Um, and economics are good, you know. Um, and the perfect plan, um, I heard it on an NPR, one of them NPR shows over the weekend, not this past weekend, but a while ago. And it was talking about the fact that if the government, now in, in my mind, it would have to be um, based on, on incomes with the people that make the less, make the least getting the most, uh, but a one-time government payout. You know, if the, if the poorest people in the, in the country say anybody that makes less than $50,000 a year uh, gets, you know, $250,000. Here's a check, use it for what you wanna use it for. And then the more you make, the less you get until, you know, if you make a billion dollars, we'll give you a dollar. Uh, anyway, that's what would help the economy short term. Nothing will help our economy in the long term if we keep going the way that it is because eventually, see now the reason I said short term is because if, if all of us, you know, I consider myself poor because I make under $50,000 a year um, and I can't just go out and, you know, buy a big ticket item, you know, and say here, here's cash for a big ticket item. Um, So us poor people get them huge checks. And what do we do? We go out and we start buying stuff. We start, sp again, start spreading that money around. The reason it's not good in the long term is because eventually all that money does trickle its way back up to those three or four people that have all the money. But you know, that's a, that's a great idea, you know? And again, bring the damn military home. Let's not worry about what happens on other people's lands. That's their problem. 
our land is our problem. Plain and simple. And now there's a whole new threat to the American way of life and, and to life in general with this whole Zika virus. Uh, just one more thing where now they're saying, you know, gun schmuns, mosquitoes can kill you. You know, so, so what, what are the alternatives to, to once you realize that the, the environment around us can kill us, what are we supposed to just barricade ourselves inside our homes? Never see anybody other than on a computer screen? That's what they want us to do. They don't want us talking amongst ourselves. They don't want dialogue between people. They want one-sided conversations for everybody. That way, we can't get together. See? And then they, and then they, you know, they, they shame us. They point out bad people like Hitler. And I know you guys are, you're all going to be pissed at me. What can I say? Hitler was the leader of a country who tried to take over the world. Well, to take over his part of the world anyway. You know, Hitler wanted to be the supreme leader of everybody. That was his goal. Which, you know, as far as civilizations go, yeah, that's the goal. I mean, isn't that what we've been doing for the past 200 years, trying to prove that we're the biggest, best, most powerful country in the world? And we go around the world wanting everybody to be like us, much like Hitler did. And I know, you're sitting at home going, yes, but Hitler killed the Jews. Well, yes, but you know... I posted on the Facebook page today, and for you Facebook people that are following the, the Unfiltered with TV Rick Blood Facebook page, and I suggest you go on it, uh, you already know what's coming. The biggest genocide in human history did not occur in Nazi Germany, but it occurred right here on this soil. 100 million Native Americans were slaughtered by our government. Yes, our government. Not our present government, but our past government. Don't feel guilty because there's nothing for you to feel guilty about. It's in the past. Same thing with racism. Everybody wants to put the, 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 the guilt of slavery on us. I'm not guilty of slavery. I never owned a slave. Maybe some of my ancestors were, but it's not my fault that they were dicks. And it's not your fault that our government killed all the Indians and took this land, but yet they, they, they talk about, you know, I heard something last week that, you know, don't vote for somebody because they were in favor of uh, eminent domain, which is the taking of somebody else's land by the government. This entire country is eminent domain. Don't you... Oh, you don't know how... How bad I want to be unpolitically correct right now. Smarten up. This whole damn country is eminent domain stolen from the Native Americans who had everything they needed, everything they wanted. I think it's sad these days that somebody that's starving to death can't go throw a fishing line in a pond and catch a fish to eat without paying the government. And I know some of you people are going, well, you know, if it wasn't for, for fish and game and blah, 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 there wouldn't be any animals. Bullshit. That's complete crap. Because in the Native American way of thinking, you didn't take to excess.
It's us. The, the pasty white killers who came in, took their land, destroyed it, and did everything to excess. And we continue to do that today. Everything is, is to excess. And it's dumb. It's going to do nothing but ruin this planet, ruin this civilization, and ruin our race. Not our, our, our race as human beings. Not our race as in white, black, Chinese, whatever. I'm talking about humans. I don't, I don't separate people into race. People have called me racist. And you know something? I say I'm not racist. I hate everybody equally. The people that I like, I like for a reason. They have proved to me that they deserve to be liked. Don't just like somebody to like somebody. Friendship or not depends on, on many things. You know, and our government, our government makes friends, tells us who our enemies are. Meanwhile, they're, they're making deals with other governments halfway across the world, and these other governments are killing and oppressing their own people. But yet our government says, oh, they're okay. Why? What else? Yes? I know, I heard y'all say it. Money. <laughs> yeah. And it's got to stop. It's got to stop. Um, last week, or the last time that uh, Steve Damasco was in and, and shot an episode of, of Shaolin Wei, um, he was talking about a, a book proposal that, that he had been working on about high school, about school bullying. And, and he forgot his manuscript here at the studio. So I stuck it on my desk. And the, the cover of it, uh, right on the cover of the book, he put the, ter the, the definition of terrorism. Terrorism, noun. One, the use of violence and threats to intimidate or coerce. Think about that for a minute. The use of violence and threats to intimidate or coerce. Such as the threat, if you don't pay your taxes, we'll put you in jail. Yeah. That's the government. The government co uses violence and threats all the time on every single one of us. And they use the media. Number two, the state of fear and submission produced by terrorism or terrorization. Again, sounds an awful lot like the media, doesn't it? Of course it does. It's got state-sponsored terrorism is, is the media. Keep them, keep them afraid. Again, tell them that mosquitoes can kill them. They'll all stay inside. Or, better yet, they'll buy this new bug spray that we just came out with that after using it for three years, one leg gets shorter than the other, but we won't tell them that. We'll make them afraid, we'll sell them a product. There's not one state in this country that, that doesn't have some input into the military machine. Right here in Keene, we've got Timken ball bearing. And I used to hear as a kid back in the 70s when we had just, you know, we had just one enemy, those dirty pinko commies, uh, you know, over there in Russia. Uh, I used to hear when I was a kid that Keene was very high on the, on the, bombing list of the Russians because of our ball bearing plant. 
because we make ball bearings for military weapons and for bombs and guided missiles and stuff. Because that was back, you know, back in the day when, you know, although, no, I guess it wasn't back in that day because, although when I was in uh, the middle school, which was, you know, the old middle school down here in Keene next to the, next to the city hall, uh, down in the basement along the walls were all like emergency rations, nuclear, you know, nuclear protected, the, the lead cans and stuff, you know, with like, I don't know what was in it because we never would open one, but it, it was like emergency rations because the place was a fallout shelter just in case Russia dropped the bomb. Again, you know, keep them scared, keep them dependent on the government, you know, thinking the government can protect them when the whole time, chances are it's the government that's putting out these false feelers making you feel insecure in the first place. And it's just stupid. So, uh, anyway, let me get to something a little bit, uh, we're about halfway through the show or so. Um, something else that I posted on the, on the Facebook page because, you know, uh, I think of a lot of stuff to talk about during the show, uh, during the week, but because of my extracurricular activities, I tend to forget a lot of stuff. And uh, I found something last week while I was sitting at my desk and... And I went, oh, I'm going to talk about this on the show. And I, I marked it in my favorites bar. And then I came in to do the show and I realized, you know, the favorites bar on my laptop is not the same as the favorites bar on my computer out there. Um, so I didn't have the story. Um, so I've started to post the stuff onto the, onto the Facebook page. Um, uh, let me do last week's story first. Um, God, if I can find it now. Hell, I went too far. Uh, it had to do with, uh, I didn't, I'm not even going to bother. There it is. Uh, it was from Tennessee. Apparently two teenage kids died because they were drinking Mountain, something called Dew Shine, which is Mountain Dew and racing, high octane racing fuel. Again, what do I say? You would think that somewhere in the education process, somewhere along the lines, by the time a kid becomes a teenager, they should at least know you don't drink racing fuel. At least nothing over 93 octane. Jesus. I mean, it's, the, again, the level of stupidity in this world is just, I mean, I've, I've heard alcoholics were, were bad, but anyway. Here's one that I found today, uh, a few hours ago, it was, uh, it was posted on Facebook and I shared it on the, on the Facebook page. Um, and it's an interesting fact about, about a shot of whiskey. And have you ever wondered why they call it a shot of whiskey? I'll tell you, because I got it right here. Uh, in the Old West, a 45 cartridge for a six-shooter cost 12 cents. And so did a glass of whiskey. So if a cowpoke was down on his luck, didn't have a lot of money, they would basically barter a bullet for a glass of whiskey. Hence, it became called a shot of whiskey. Pretty cool, huh? Here's something that's not cool. I got this the other day, yesterday, uh, which was last, last Wednesday, and I posted it. Oh, come on, what did I do? There it is. Um, this comes from a Facebook page called Parents Against Gun Violence, and it's a few, a few of the reasons people shot people in January 2016. This is one month, people. Everything that I'm about to read happened in one month. 
These are reasons people shot other people. A kid rang my doorbell and ran away, so I shot him. Oklahoma, 1-1. The guy in the apartment upstairs unintentionally fired his gun through the floor and killed my relative, so I took my gun up there and shot him dead. Tennessee, 1-4. My son and I were arguing about the lottery tickets he, or the lottery numbers he chose, so I shot him. Louisiana, 1-9. I heard a noise in the basement, so I got my gun to investigate. My son jumped out and said boo, which startled me, so I shot him. Ohio, 1-12. My wife complained that I keep leaving the coffee maker on, so I shot her dead. Illinois, 1-15. My dad and I went to the gun shop to pick up a gun that had been repaired. The father and son who owned the shop wanted to charge us $25, so we shot them, and they shot us. They died, we went to the hospital. Mississippi, 123. One of my neighbors borrowed my snow shovel without permission to shovel another elderly neighbor's walkway, so I shot him. New Jersey, 124. I left a folding chair on a public street to save my parking space, but somebody moved it, so I shot him. Massachusetts, 125. That happened in Boston. I saw that story on Fox 25 News. I saw a woman walking down the street and tried to flirt with her. She wasn't interested, so I shot her dead. Pennsylvania, 122. Still think guns aren't or guns aren't in the hands of the wrong people. Now none of these say whether these people legitimately own guns or, or what, but most of them sound, you know, like the normal everyday kind of person. They weren't committing any other crimes except shooting people, apparently. Um, it's just It's not just terrorists that we have to watch out for. You have to watch out for everybody. And for God's sakes, agree on the lottery numbers before you buy them. <laughs> That's dumb. Oh, what else did I want to get into? Um, again, I, I mean, I touched on the, the, the genocide that we've got, but the, uh, the sheer hypocrisy of the American people. I mean, grow up and face it, people. I have. No, I'm not perfect. My ancestors were by far not perfect. You know? Hell, women have only had the right to vote for less than 100 years. Because, yes, we too used to treat women like crap and consider them second-class citizens. It just amazes me. Um, uh, I don't know. What can you say? Uh, on, on the upside, uh, we had Groundhog Day last week. And guess what? Groundhog predicts a early spring. That's right. He didn't see his shadow. And, uh, you know, the guys in the big top hats and the, and the, the tails, you know, they read the proclamation and it was kind of a, it seemed almost like a Dr. Seuss kind of a, a, a poem kind of thing. Um, saying that, you know, Puxatawney Phil says that it's going to be a, uh, All right. Again, you know, as a guy that smokes a little pot once in a while, these are the kind of people that, that give my pastime a bad name. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, man accused of trying to sell drugs in traffic court. Is there more? 
There must be more. Come on. That's the headline. Come on, computer. Well, it didn't give me any more. All right, we'll move on from that. It's stupid. You don't sell drugs in court. All right. I've got some, some uh, we've got a couple minutes left. I'm gonna, I'm gonna run through some. Uh, see, it's how, you know, I'm tired of, I'm just tired, tired of ranting. Um, all this is kind of weird because, uh, you know, we're all, we all scream about, you know, Muslims and, and you know, Muslim states and, and this and that and their, their odd views. Uh, Iran carries out more gender change operations than any other country in the world. According to official statistics, Iran has somewhere between 15,000 and 20,000 transsexuals inhabiting it. Although unofficial statistics place that number at approximately 150,000. Yeah. Now, maybe that's female to male transgenders because they just finally get tired of being treated like women over there so they become men. I don't know. That makes, you know, that makes kind of sense. Doesn't make any sense in a Muslim country to be a guy and say, you know, I'd really love to never have to drive my car or, you know, have to cover everything up so I'll become a woman. Um, Mark your calendar. <laughs> it's another interesting fact that I just learned from reading the interesting facts. <laughs> uh, May 29th is, uh, is official put a pillow on your fridge day. It's celebrated on May 29th in Europe and the USA and supposedly brings good luck and wealth to the, to the household. So on May 29th, put a pillow on your fridge Tell people you heard it here on Unfiltered. I don't care. <laughs> They'll say, what is he, crazy? Well, I can read my computer screen better if I take my glasses off. Um, here we go. The tea bag was uh, an accidental invention. This occurred in, eight, in 1908 when tea merchant Thomas Sullivan distributed his tea samples in small silken bags. His customers, not understanding that these were samples, dunked them and suddenly Sullivan was swamped with orders for the tea bags. There you go, accidental. Uh, there you go, hey, uh, this, is, this is interesting. Um, Especially for all you yahoos that, that think that jackass is such a, a fantastic friggin' brainchild of an idea. Um, oh, crap, you know, and it's too late. I gotta go. Peace.